like that. <laughs> Woo! And hit the cash app, which is dollar sign BJ Matthews when y'all come in here. Um, also, if you have a, have a comment that y'all want to drop, make sure y'all go into our YouTube chat on the super stickers and super comments that are available below. Hit that thanks button, you know what I mean, to go ahead and get a comment drop and go in and, you know what I'm saying, support the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. But nonetheless, we have a very special guest for y'all today, man. A dear friend of ours, man, our mentor, uh, more like family to us, man. Uh, the big dog of the uh, hour, man, the big dog on the stage has shown me so much in my life. And I know Rick can, you know, vouch for this as well. Uh, our man, Rob Parker, you know what I'm saying, of the Odd Couple, and as well as a well-known Fox Sports anchor. Big Rob, how you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me. You know, I appreciate it. And that's right. We all like family, and uh, I appreciate everything you guys do and the support you give me and the love you give me and all that, man. I just wish you all the best. And, you know, anytime I've been able to try to help, I've been there. Yes, sir. And 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 nonetheless, man, um, I definitely appreciate you, what you've been to us, man. It's been like an inspiration. Um, and I want to go into first, you know, you know, kind of you. Everybody knows you on the big screen, you know, shows like Undisputed First Take, um, being a sports anchor with Chris Broussard. What are some of the highlights of your career and like kind of th- taught you what you are, who you are today, like have really molded you to the person you are? You know, I mean, I've I wanted to do this since I was nine years old, growing up in New York. Um, wanted to be a sports writer. You know, I love baseball. I wanted to be a major league baseball player. And my it was my backup plan. It was like, if I don't make it as a baseball player, like, um, you know, what could I do? And And I had this love for writing and love for sports. And that's how I really got interested. But, like, highlights of my career definitely – when I became the first black sports columnist at the Detroit Free Press. Um, That was back in 1993. And when the paper hired me, the paper was 161 years old. Just think about that. In Detroit, a black city, they never had a black sports columnist at the Free Press. And uh, Detroit became a second home. I, I told you, I'm from New York originally. But I spent 20 great years in Detroit, man. The people embraced me like uh, like I was from there. Uh, I own a barber shop on Seven Mile Road uh, for 21 years called Sporty Cuts, connection with the community. Um, I opened up a sports bar downtown at one point. I had a hot dog restaurant. I got married in Detroit. I got divorced in Detroit. You know, it was all, I grew up in Detroit. So um, those moments were great, and uh, but but I, I must admit I've been doing this for thirty seven years. The biggest and the thing that gives me the the biggest pride and joy and thrill is what I've been able to do with MLBBro.com the last three years. And Rick knows this because he's a part of it. Um, but you know we have a staff of over sixty people, young brothers and sisters who you know, love baseball, who are into the game, trying to promote black players and learn how to make baseball content. And uh, this past year, we partnered with Major League Baseball, which is a huge step. You know, baseball is an $11 billion industry. They can do whatever it wants. And they still wanted to partner with us because they like what we were doing. Um, And then we were just at the All-Star Game in Seattle. And you saw this picture splashed all over social media. Uh, current players, former players wearing our MLB bro hats and T-shirts and, you know, showing us love. So it, 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 that's the thing I love the most, uh, but I'm, I'm honored. And as you know, um, next month in August, I'll be inducted into the National Association of Black Journalists uh, Hall of Fame, which is humbling in itself to be able to be honored by your peers, you know, while you're still alive and you can still see it. It is is unbelievable. And um, since, you know what I'm saying, um, Rick is a part of MLB Bros, I'm going to kind of let him take the floor a little bit, man, ask him a little bit about um, the whole corporate. I'd like to hear more about it, Rob, and I'm the sure Trey Preacher, the audience will too. So, Rick, I'll let you take So, I wanted to start off by saying this. Everybody who goes on my page when y'all asking me, do you do basketball or baseball? This is the founder right here, the man himself of MLBbro.com. 
Afcon.com. Make sure y'all check it out. Good content. Like I said, African American, Hispanic baseball players, check it out. Y'all, like y'all say, y'all see my page and be filled up with it. This is the man right here. But the question I want to ask you, uh, Mr. Rob, is this. When did this become a a a vision of yours? I know you say you started three years ago, but what what cultivated it? What what grew? What made it an idea to you? Yeah, you know yeah, what? You it, know was what? it was about, about five, five years, five ago. years ago. I was just I was... thinking to myself with my love for baseball, and I just thought like the black player was underrepresented. You know, there are more storylines. Uh, I wanted the black community to know about these players and who they are and where they came from and the road they took to get to the major league, uh, major leagues. And that was really what made me think of it. And, and J.R. Gamble, uh, uh, is, is a part of, of, of it. And Mark Gray, we were all at the baseball all-star game in Washington, DC, a number of years ago, the three of us, we have a great picture of us three together. And it was at that time that we, had talked about my idea and them, you know, trying to help me make it uh, a reality. Uh, and then we started to, we started it and we started with 14 people three years ago. And now here we are three years later and we got 62 people. So it's grown. If I told you how many emails and inquiries I get from college kids and people want to be a part of it, you wouldn't believe it. Um, so, so I know we've struck a chord. We want to reach the younger people. Baseball is a part of our culture. I mean, some of the greatest players who ever played Major League Baseball are black. Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Barry Bond. I could go on and on and on. These are all black people, black players. So we can't lose our history, and we need to let uh, black kids know as well that their baseball is an option. Everybody can't make the NBA. Everybody can't make the NFL. That's like one of the biggest myths. All everybody, the coaches have stopped the kids from playing more than one sport. And it was just a few years ago, four years, five years ago, when Kyla Murray became the first player ever to be drafted in the first round in baseball and the first round in football. Never happened before. So if you're a young player out there and they tell you you got to play one sport 24-7, 365, they're lying to you. You can play multiple sports and and still achieve. This whole notion that you have to put everything into one sport, uh, I think, is is a terrible message for kids. And I hope everybody, I hope everybody heard that. You heard what the man said. You don't have to focus your energy all in the one sport. Eleven billion dollar industry. I repeat, eleven billion dollar industry. And that's going to be his contract. So you watch and see when this goes down. That's the kind of money that's in baseball. Man. Man. Go ahead, BJ. Go ahead. All right. So uh, we got about 10 more minutes, man, because, you know, Rob's a busy man. So we're going to let people come in. You know what I'm saying? If you have a question, please keep it between one or two minutes so we can get the next person in. Um, you have to uh, get your interview badge to talk to Mr. Rob. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but he was gracious enough to come in here. Um, shout out to the people who's hit the cash app, man. Elder, uh, Herm, Allen, for the people that, you know, want to hit the cash app. It's right there on the bottom. But um, before we let people in, Rob, let me ask you this question. So the odd couple, how are you prevailing in that? How do you see yourself with Chris um, and the relationship you have with him? Well, you know, Chris and I have known each other since 1992. That's where we met at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention in Detroit back then. And uh, the show is doing well. Chris and I, we start our sixth year, unbelievable, uh, in September. Um, and the show is doing very well. People have connected to it. Chris and I have a, a chemistry. We are indeed the odd couple. We live different lives, you know what I mean? And, and it's natural. It's not like a fake thing where we're trying to be opposite. We just are different people. But even when we yell and scream at each other and, 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 and have our disagreements, the thing that I think makes our, our show so strong is that we respect each other. We both come from newspaper backgrounds. We know each other. Chris worked at the New York Times at one time. I worked at Newsday and the Daily News in New York. We worked at big time newspapers. We know uh, about being credible. 
and not just throwing junk up against the wall and hoping it sticks. So I think that's the good thing about the show. It's authentic. And uh, we're on 400 stations around the country. So we're proud of the odd couple. Got our first guest right here. What's up, Herm? Herm. Salute, salute, um, BJ, Rick. Salute, Mr. Rob Parker. How, how y'all doing, man? Man, doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm a big baseball guy, too. Uh, so I have a question for you regarding that. Who do you think is the greatest baseball team of all time? I, I'm kind of biased towards my – my 90s and leather brains, even though they kind of underachieved, but I do think they have one of the best starter rotations of all time with Glavin, Maddox, um, and Smokes. How you how you feel about that? No doubt. I mean, you had three Hall of Fame pitchers on the same staff for t over 10 years. They should have won more. It, it, it It's a shame. I mean, they can't be considered the greatest because of that. Some people look at the Cincinnati Reds, the Big Red Machine, the Yankees of the early 2000s, I mean, 99, you know, late 90s and early 2000s, they were the last dynasty. They won three in a row and four out of five. That Yankee yep. team was incredible. And a lot of those guys, you know, were, were homegrown, the Yankees. Uh, Posada, Jeter, Andy Pettit, Mariano Rivera, and Bernie Williams all came from the Yankees minor league system. I'm going to pick the Yankees. Uh, as one of the all-time greats, but the Big Red Machine, and then the Oakland A's of the 70s, they won three straight World Series. Oh, uh, yeah, they most definitely was, was great, too. Yep, so those teams. Yeah, make sure, Herm, you check out MLBBro.com. We got some great content, uh, all stuff on our social media platforms. Uh, it's, it's really worth checking out. Thank you. I uh, most definitely will, most definitely will. Appreciate you, my man, Her. Man, salute to y'all, man. Rob, well, I'm going uh, I'm to hit you with a curveball, man. I come with the spicy stuff when I get up here. So everybody know what the GOAT stands for, Rob. Yeah. Everybody knows what greatest of all time is. Rob, I don't think a lot of people know this about you. I need you to explain what the Pope is, P-O-A-T. The Pope? Yes, sir. Who, who's the pettiest of all time, Rob? Oh, oh, uh, that, that's that. That is uh, Kevin Durant. Oh yeah. So, explain why. <laughs> I mean, I, I always say Kevin Durant to be such a great player and to have achieved all this stuff. Uh, it just seems like he's petty. Like, like he he can't he can't take any criticism. I don't know about you. I'm just being honest. If somebody, no, I, I agree with you. If somebody was I, a, was on on social media ribbing me or whatever, and I was Kevin Durant, and I made forty million, I would be on vacation or hanging out with my family and friends. I wouldn't be worried about every little body, every person who 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 disagrees with you on Twitter or whatever. It seems like he's petty. Uh, he's a great player, but he is the Pope, the pettiest of all time. Pettiest of all time. Yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> he pettiest, he's pettiest can be. But uh, congratulations to everything, Rob. Uh, I need you to do one more thing before I leave. What's that? Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard ain't going to be hurt every year, Rob. I need you to get ready for this ring. Hey, I, you know what? At some point, you keep believing that it's going to work out. I love what the Clippers, I love their team. I love Ty Lue, but it's so disappointing every year. So if they can stay healthy, there definitely would be uh, a challenge for Denver in the West. I, I agree with that. Yeah, this it, for sure. Health, health is a is the big key. They they, they ain't gonna be hurt every year. No doubt. No Thank, doubt. You, Thank Thomas. you, Thomas. Appreciate you, Rob. Yo, Appreciate you, Rob. Appreciate you, No problem. No problem. Yo, Rob. I've talked to a lot of I've NBA players. I asked them who would you want at the end of the game to make a shot: Ray Allen, Reggie Miller, or Steph Curry. And nobody picks Steph. That's why I have a hard time saying he's the greatest shooter. If you were the greatest shooter, really, everybody would want you to have the ball at the end. But they don't. So he's a great three-point shooter. I get all that. But it's hard for me to crown somebody the greatest shooter when people don't want him when the, when the game's on the line. How could you, how could you be a, a shooter of that caliber and be 0 for 12 when it matters most? That's, that's shocking to me. Man.
Oh, man. So if anybody else got any more questions, man, just feel free to come up. We got a couple more minutes. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll let you extend this thing a couple more minutes, all right, since we got lost, you know what I mean, if people want to chime in. So let's let's try to take it to 25 if you can. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, Rick, you can probably pick the next person. Erm just asked, do you think baseball should let Barry Bonds and Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame? Not Pete Not Rose, Pete but Rose, definitely, but Barry, definitely Bonds. Barry Bonds. Pete Rose, Pete Rose did the gambling before gambling, you know, like the whole idea. He knew that gambling was against the rules, and he did it anyway. When you think about Bonds, I think Bonds is totally different. Baseball wasn't testing for, for the juice back then. And then, you know, all of a sudden they started testing – and Barry never got suspended by baseball, never tested positive. I mean, that that's the part that I it's hard for me uh to to look at and think that um, you know, that 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 Bonds um Bonds' career, uh, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I voted for him all ten years. He was on the ballot. There was a couple other questions I saw about uh the ESPN layoffs, you know, I worked there for eight years. It's a shame. Um, a lot of this is window dressing for Wall Street and for the investors to say that they're cutting the fat. I uh, hate to see some of the guys who got let go and people I know and work with. So that's a shame. Um, it's disappointing, yeah. but it's the part of the business. You know, this is uh, if you've been in this business as long as I have, you've seen a lot of this. Another question I saw has Aaron Rodgers underachieved. It's a combination. Um, there was a time in Green Bay, I thought, where they never gave him a defense. He lost so many playoff games where the defense gave up 40 points. And in the last couple of years have been definitely disappointing uh, with the team and, and some of the way he's played. I mean, it's hard for me to look at a guy who's won four MVPs, uh, been all pro, won a Super Bowl. It's not like he never won. Dan Marino, some people think, of, is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. He never won a Super Bowl and had great numbers. So it's just the way you look at it. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this thing plays out in New York. Um, I don't see them winning a Super Bowl. But if he were to get the Jets to the Super Bowl or win a Super Bowl, it would be one of the all-time great stories in sports. It would be. Okay. We got one more question, Robin. We'll be up out of here. So, hope you on. What you got? Good morning to all of you. Um, I just got one question. Why Rob don't like Steph Curry? Don't like Steph Curry. Hope, Curry. <laughs> I just don't I think just he's don't the think greatest he's shooter of all time. He changed the game, though. Nobody else has done what he has done. Nobody else has unlimited range like him. So... Of course, I'm a Stephen Curry fan, so I just wanted to know because I do watch you on uh, – I've watched you on Undisputed, but, you know. Yeah, I'm well, here's my thing, though. You're right about that. Did he change the game for the good or the worse of the NBA? Everybody thinks that they it, could throw up three-pointers, and I hate the game, what it's turned into, uh, three-pointers or dunks. There's more to, to basketball than that. If you if you were enjoying it, I'm not gonna knock you, but I don't enjoy it. I've been covering the NBA since 1987, and I've seen the game evolve a lot. I don't like the game the way it is, the way it's played, where big guys are shooting from the perimeter and nobody post up, and just the the the, the play of it, long rebounds, and you know because everybody's shooting threes. I it, I just think there's a better game out there, and I hope that the NBA can can get back into playing a little bit more of what basketball used to be. That's all. Thanks, Steph. Thanks for nothing. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Man, Rob Cole, man. Rob's a cold one. You know, that. Hey. You know I had to get that out there. I had to. Hey, like Rob, he being Rob. nice. I don't know why he's not coming in at the end. <laughs> hey Rob we, we got a 25 minute we got right in man but um always appreciate you coming in man um and like I said we're gonna have to hang out this month hang out this month yeah no 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 I'm, yeah, I'm no, gonna no, come no, down, I'm gonna to, come San down to San Diego we're gonna go to a Padres game even though I can't believe how bad they are we will go for sure
Uh, Rob, Rob, don't let you go, though, man. All right, guys. All right, man. Man. All right appreciate success. you. Appreciate well. you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> appreciate right. you, Rob. <laughs>